Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Time Farm Preview for not just the Hennessy meeting as it used to be, the Labrooks meeting now, not just the Saturday of that, which will come tomorrow. We're going to look ahead to Friday's racing as well in the company. I'm Dan Barber with Kieran Clark, one of our race analysts at Time Farm. Three bets, potential bets for you for Friday's good quality supporting card. I'll be offering one of those and Kieran will be offering the other two. And I'll hand over to Kieran now for his first selection on Friday's racing at Newbury. Yeah, I don't. We'll, we'll start with the handicap chase, just shy of two and a half miles. The one I thought had a good chance was with San Benedito. I thought he shaped quite encouragingly in the summer plate last time over an extended 21 furlongs. I, I like the drop back in trip here. I think he's best up to two and a half. This is obviously just shy of that distance. He's now three pounds lower, which puts him off the same mark. He won the, the Great World Gold Cup off at this track a couple of seasons ago, and he's um, five pound lower than when off in this race last year as well. So I just thought the, the ground might be key to him as well. It's good ground currently, and I don't think there's much rain forecast. Um, so hopefully he gets a bit of a decent ground because he seemed pretty effective on that surface and um, he just looks a well handicapped type really. He's old Grangewood won this race twice in the last three years. He's 17 pounds better off in the weights with that one now. Yeah, yeah. Last year's renewal. So I thought he'd be the one I'd be on in this. When I like to see Page and old Grangewood, I just thought the handicap and maybe have them. I know old Grangewood ran quite well in the old run, but um, I don't know if he's off a mark he can win off now. So it'd be San Benedito for me in that two and a half mile race. Okay, well, sticking with the theme and confess that Kieran and I didn't discuss our individual selections, so this wasn't a team effort, but I'm sticking with Nichols as well. In race three, the 150 in that novice hurdle, I like Brave Man's game to turn over Bothwell Bridge. And maybe I wouldn't have chosen this if we'd have recorded this a bit earlier on on Friday than, than late afternoon because I wasn't aware then of the potential form boost. But Runswick Bay just saw off another Nichols trained horse this afternoon in a novice hurdle at Taunton. Had to scrap to see him off. And Runswick Bay couldn't get within double-digit margin of Brave Man's game when he ran against this horse in an extra novice the other week. He was beaten 11 lengths. There was 10 back to Dal Horrigal that maybe didn't take to it really well, but he was a good flat operator over staying trips at, at his best. And even the fifth horse that day, who was beaten out of sight, has run better to reach the frame since. So there's, there's depth to that form, some strength to it. The time backs it up. And I was just very impressed with Brayman's game. He, he obliterated Runswick Bay, really. He just dismantled him and the market suggested that was expected because he went off odds on to win what looked a fairly warm race building on the promise of that Chepstow hurdling debut he didn't win a bumper but he ran only twice and he ran in good bumpers he cost an absolute mint this horse he's a good looker as well and I think stepping up to two and a half is the icing on the cake really surely with that pedigree and the fact he looked a strong galloping type at Exeter and at Chepstow suggest that this will, will bring out the very best in him. And I think the very best of him could be pretty smart, to be honest. No knocking Bothwell Bridge. He did everything right at, at Warwick, but it was a race that was became a penalty kick because his main market rival was taken out. Didn't win in a couple of bumpers while shaping well. Doesn't, to me, strike as the same sort of stayer that Brave Man's game will be. And to be honest, I'd be a bit disappointed if the scopey Brave Man's game can't prove too good for Bothwell Bridge. Hopefully the market doesn't agree. And it makes a second favourite. So I'll be Nichols as well. Are we going to complete the full set? Are we going to another trainer for your second selection, Kieran? I think we'll go to uh, to the now dual purpose trainer, Alan King, who's having a good time. In, in the last, I, I like the look of Coeur de Leon at a price. It's obviously a race that's going to revolve around Hill 16, who looked a, a totally different animal on his reappearance for first start for Nigel Twiston Davis. He's, it's three pound lower reverting back to hurdles and that victory at first last over fences. He's probably going to be a short price favourite. So I thought I'll try and find one at a price. And I thought Kurt Leon shaped quite well in his three starts in this sphere last season. The first two of those, he was ridden by an inexperienced claimer who mm. really didn't get the bottom 
get to the bottom of him. And then the last of those was in that valuable Coral Cup consolation at Kempton the day after Chilton, where he was, he still had every chance to out and he made a, a whole mix of it and lost his momentum. And he, he's ended up shaping a lot better than the distance beating suggests. And I quite like the step up in trip. He's not tried three miles over hurdles yet and he's a dollar stayer on the flat. He obviously won the Ascot Stakes this season. And I wouldn't be put off by his below par effort in the Cesar Reach. He's tried that test three times now and he's not really gone to form. Um, so I just don't think it's the race for him. And um, yeah, I thought stepping back up in trip, he's, he's around 12 to one. Tom Bellamy on board. I thought he's definite worth an each way bet at a double figure price. So that would be him in the, in the lucky last to hopefully um, carry on our good run. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? First run over three over hurdles when he's always looked to Dower stay. So that's a definite angle there. So we've got a range of three there. One in a handicap chase, one in a handicap hurdle we're putting up each way, and then a likely short one, boring me, unoriginal me, with Brave Man's Game in the novice hurdle. But they're three to look at for Newbury on Friday to get us warmed up for the main course there on Saturday. So good luck, everybody, whether you follow us in or not. All the best.